Hello everybody and welcome to part four of the custom bass, gar <laughs> bass guitar build series, that's the one, in this video. Not entirely sure what I'm doing, but I'm going to work it out along the way. Let's go. Right, so the fretboard has glued on beautifully, no gaps whatsoever, which is exactly what we want. I may have done a little bit of a boo-boo and made it a little bit too thin straight out of the planar thicknesser because obviously the excitement of having someone else in the workshop yesterday kind of distracted me. But yeah, it should be thick enough. Uh, the issue is that I planed it down to five millimeters, but I need to add a radius to this later on, which is gonna make those edges look a little bit thin, but I shouldn't cut through, um, I hope but we'll see. So I think what I'm gonna do first is just cut off all this excess ebony. Uh, I'm gonna cut it off on the bandsaw so I can keep some of it for scraps later on rather than turn it all into shavings. And then I guess I'll add the radius to this fretboard. Right, so the fretboard is all flushed off with the side of the neck and looking rather pretty. I've transferred the marks from the bottom of the guitar round the side, so I now know where the headstock starts, where the nut starts, where the bridge starts and everything like that. And I have also cut the relief for where the body is going to be joined, as well as put a very, very shallow radius on the bottom of the fretboard as well, because I think it looks pretty nice. So now what I need to do is start radiusing or cambering the fretboard. Now, this is going to be a compound radius. So towards the nut, this is going to be around a 10 inch radius is what I'm thinking. And at the other end of the fretboard, this is going to be a 15 inch radius, so a little bit wider. And these are quite shallow curves, but they're kind of what I've just ripped off another bass guitar design that I saw online. They use those radiuses, so I'm assuming they'll be all right. And I can't afford for these radiuses to be too tight because like I said earlier, I planed this ebony a little bit too thin. So if the radius is really tight, then it's gonna make the edge of the ebony very thin there. So. 10 inch and a 15 inch radius on this fretboard. But firstly, before I do anything, I need to make the templates to show those radiuses. So this is going to involve using a router with a tram alarm on it. So firstly, what we're gonna do is drill a massive hole in the center of a long bit of MDF. And then within my router, I'm gonna fit this thing, which is a centering cone, which is made by Bosch. I'm sure there's other ones out there as well, but this is the one I've got. It fits straight into your collet, and this can go into quarter inch or half inch collets. And we'll tighten it down by hand. It doesn't need to be too tight in there. And then I'm going to put that directly on the hole and plunge the router. And that cone is going to center itself in that hole and get that collet nice and central above the hole. So there it is there. And then very carefully, I'm gonna bring the router back up, being careful not to move it. As you can see, that that is perfectly central in the hole. Then I've got a tiny pencil here, and there's two holes in the base where I'm gonna put a little circle. And that is where I know I need to drill and screw in order to attach this base to the bit of MDF and keep it nice and central. Right, and then take the motor out of the base. And then this would be much easier if you had a proper extension bit. I don't, so I'm just stacking up three of them, but this is going to allow me to go through there and screw a hole straight into the MDF. Be a little bit dodgy, but it will work, hopefully. 
So there we go, that is now fixed to the bit of the MDF and nice and central on there too. So then centering cone out of the router and we'll pop in the straight cutter that we need. Pop it back into the base. And then what we need to do is plunge it down so that it hits the workbench below and the cutter is nice and flush with the bottom of this. So then because for these templates, they're going to be a 15 inch and a 10 inch internal radius, because it's internal, I need to measure it from the far side of the router cutter. So simply gonna hook the tape measure over the end of that and then mark 10 inches on here and 15 inches on here. Whereas obviously vice versa, if you were doing an external radius for these, you would have to measure it from the inside. It's a minimal difference in terms of the actual measurement, but depending on the size of the cutter you're doing and depending on how accurate you need to work to drawings and radiuses perhaps, you need to make sure that you're measuring from the correct side of the router cutter because it's very easy to get wrong. On my project Origin, which was a table, the legs on that required internal radiuses and they all needed to meet up perfectly. Whereas on my project Cognition, when I had to make the lamination templates for that, those were external radiuses. So I had to measure from the inside of the router cutter. Now I've got a random scrap of plywood here. I'm gonna drill a hole in that, which is the same diameter as the holes that are drilled in the tram alarm. And this is going to be double-sided tapes to my workbench. Make sure your bench is nice and clean of dust and rubbish like that, and then plant it firmly down. Right, that ain't going anywhere. In fact, I think that's gonna be a bit of a nightmare to get off more than anything. So then take the bit, out the drill, flip over your tram alarm, and we'll start with the 10 inch radius here. Pop the drill bit through that hole and line it up with the hole on this other bit. And that is going to be a swing for your 10 inch radius. So with that, I know that I need a second bit of plywood, which is now going to be our template, and that needs to go directly under here. Okay, so one there. And while I'm here, I might as well stick down the 15 inch one as well, which is going to be stuck a little bit further behind, I suspect. So pop it there, stick it down. So we'll start with the 10 inch radius on here and I don't have my glamorous assistant that I did the other day, so I won't be able to have someone holding the extraction for me, but this is easy enough to operate one handed. So extraction pipe here and then just plunge that in. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so now to put this compound radius onto the fretboard. Now, this is a tricky one to produce because just to reiterate what we're doing here, we've got a tighter radius up this end here and a shallower radius up this end here. So what I've done is sharpened a small curve on the end of my blade, as I do every single time I sharpen the blade. And this is gonna allow me to choose exactly where I want to take the shaving from on this fretboard. So in order to produce this radius, what we need to do is establish our center line right down the center of this neck and that is where we're going to be taking all of our middle shavings from. However, all of the shavings that we take towards the edge of the neck need to start following the angle of the neck itself. So in effect, we're planing in kind of a fan shape. So that means that the shavings are more concentrated up here and they're more spread out up this end here. If all of your shavings are parallel with that center line, so they don't follow these outside lines at all, they only follow that center line, you're gonna get an even radius all the way along. So we're obviously gonna go for the former here. We're gonna go straight down the center and we're gonna follow the edges of this neck, which is going to give us the compound radius. This is information that I got from Ben Crow at Crimson Custom Guitars, so I'm not gonna take credit for this. But yeah, here we go.
Right, so there we go. If we stick that on there, it's sitting nice and stable, no rock side to side. We have the correct radius. And similarly down the bottom here, again, we have the correct radius, so something a little bit more shallow. And the only thing to check now is that it is dead straight along its length. So if you tilt the plane on its side, you can't see any gaps of light through that, so it's pretty good. Right, so there we go. Fretboard has been stuck on, flushed off, radius, and is now ready to have the fret slots cut out of it, which we'll be doing in the next episode. However, I don't think I've actually bought enough fret wire for it. So um, I'll get the slots cut anyway, see how many are missing, and we will go from there. I'll see you in the next episode.